The Inspector General of Police, Susman Akali Baba, has challenged the new 742 constables to be good ambassadors of the police force. The police boss was represented by the Deputy Inspector General of Police, Johnson Kokumo, at the passing out parade in Lagos. Senior correspondent Ivy Kano was at the ceremony. These officers started the training six months ago as recruits that are leaving as constables. There are a 2021 batch of recruitment scheme of the Nigeria Police Force. Though a total of 746 got into the college, 742 are passing out. Out of this figure, 207 are females and 535 are males. Four could not meet the standards due to indiscipline. The reviewing officer is Deputy Inspector General of Police Johnson Kukomo, who represented the Inspector General of Police. While inspecting the six guards, he taxed the constables to be good ambassadors of the force. To take this noble part of law enforcement, let me remind you that the bedrock of policing is discipline. And I'm sure you must have been taught that the best form of discipline is self-discipline. Much as you have a promising and bright career ahead of you, how far you go in this career depends to a great extent on your character, discipline, and of course, integrity. Former Assistant Inspector General of Police lauded the training received by the constables. This is going to increase the number of policemen on the field. It's going to increase the feasibility of policing in the field. It's going to, that feasibility now will deter criminals because that person deter criminal. And you see the training they give you to now. It's a modern thing. So the training we went through, not as diligent as this. You've seen all the parade now. That means that the present call of policemen going to the society now are well trained, more trained than we, we what we went through. The parade, which consists of six guards, two female and four male guards, is taking place simultaneously in 12 training schools across the country. Known as the Depart Police College Training Ground and are posted to various commands across the country, how they treat members of the public determines if the training they've received here had any impact on them. Ivy Kano. CVC News, Lagos. And to other stories now, President Muhammad Buhari says the federal government has committed more than $400 million to revive the moribund Ajao Kuta Steel Company. He said this in Kogi State, while commissioning legacy projects executed by Governor Yahaya Bilu's administration. While addressing traditional rulers at the newly built Ohino East Palace, the president said the federal government will continue to explore ways to tap into the mineral potential of Kogi State. The projects commissioned by the president include a flyover, Model Science Secondary School, Muhammadu Buhari Square in Lokoja, the state capital, a reference hospital, amongst others. He also commended Governor Yahaya Bello for fulfilling his electionary campaign promises. Consider it many, many well spent as we move closer to achieving our objective of transforming Kogi State into Nigeria's iron and steel powerhouse. <laughs> the benefits of getting Ajakuta Steel Complex working again are numerous. It will provide over 500,000 estimated jobs and more than 1.6 billion United States dollars in annual income to the Nigerian economy. This secondary school can even be likened to some universities in Africa. And Your Excellency, there are so many more projects. You will commission Muhammad Buhari Square. You are going to help us to commission a modern security vehicles equipped with modern state-of-the-art equipment. The federal government says its investment in infrastructure will aid business growth in the country. Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashala, said this during an inspection tour of ongoing facilities within the Apapa Oshodi Ojota Oworoshoki Expressway. Theophilos Elama reports. 
The administration of President Mohamed Buhari has undoubtedly devoted the last seven years to infrastructural development, which comes at a cost. The Minister of Works and Housing is in Lagos to inspect ongoing projects embarked upon by the federal government. The crew took a trip to Ojota Oroshoki, Oshudi, and Apapa Expressway to see the extent of work done on the roads. Infrastructure is the key that unleashes trading and productivity, which is so strong on. But without infrastructure, you can't trade and you can't produce. So let's just be clear about that. The Apapa Oroshoki Expressway is a major infrastructure asset for import and export business because it connects to the largest and the busiest seaport in the country, the Tinkan Island and the Apapa port. Um, by 2015, uh, people will remember how difficult, how chaotic it was, how painful it was in this state, in this axis, and how the pain translated to other parts of the state. Clearly, without a shred of doubt, Although the work is not finished, the difference is clear. There has been very, very measurable and quantifiable progress. The minister explains that infrastructural development will lead to economic growth of the people and ultimately the nation. There are people from different parts of the country who have turned uh, this land and our port area into a very disorganized uh, environment. I have news for them, it is going to stop. We're coming out of them, tongues and hammers. And uh, we're ready for all the arguments that can be wicked up, including ethnic and religious. But this is lawlessness and we must stop it. And it is a return to law and order. And we don't care where you, are, where you come from. Once you obey the law, you are my Nigerian brother and you are my Nigerian sister. If you don't, we will come after you, tongues and hammers. He went further to assure Nigerians of its resolve to complete ongoing projects in record time. Theophilus Ilama, TVC News, Lagos. And now to the National Assembly where the House of Representatives has commenced investigation into the alleged loss of more than $2.4 billion revenue from illegal sale of 48 million barrels of crude oil exports in 2015. The House is probing crude oil sales from 2014 till date. At its inaugural meeting, the ad hoc committee assured all whistleblowers of confidentiality for every information provided. The committee says it is still gathering memoranda from stakeholders and called for support from all concerned in the overall interests of the country. Even though the matter occurred in 2015, it was only brought to the fore by a whistleblower towards the end of 2020. I remember that was the COVID period. And in, in the time between when that allegation came up and now, there has also been the issue of trying to identify the whistleblowers, trying to determine whether or not there was even a reason to commence this investigation. The court we go live after our visit, after our discussions. We go live first quarter of 2023. At least if we're able to refine some of our crude oil here, we will reduce oil subsidy in the country. 